One in six males is sexually abused at some point in their lives. Males are often reluctant to bring their stories to the attention of family or authorities. Dr. Howard Fragkin is a co-founder of a national group against male sexual victimization and joins us now in our studio. Thanks for being here, Dr. Fragkin. Thank you. It's my honor. Now, you're the co-founder of Male Survivor. Uh, could you talk about that and how the group began? Male Survivor is an international organization that works to prevent and assist male survivors of any mm -hmm. kind of sexual abuse as children or as adults and get them the help that they need, find resources. We have a very active website, malesurvivor.org, where people can get a lot of help and a lot of assistance. They can learn about books. They can find other survivors and their allies, partners who they can speak with and just learn that they're not alone, which is really critical to healing. Now, often boys are abused by male figures in their lives, such as priests, scoutmasters, coaches, etc. Why is that? Those kind of people have authority and engender trust in those boys. So they learn that, that these are people that are nice to them, that are kind to them. They groom them, which means like Jerry Sandusky did at Penn State, in which he gave them all sorts of favors. He took them to football games. He took them on trips, took them to his house for overnight visits. So, they felt safe and comfortable with him, and then perpetrators like him abuse that trust that they engender in those boys, and that's how they're able to victimize them. Now, what about males being abused by females? Unfortunately, females are just as capable as abusing boys, and oftentimes men are much more reluctant if they've been abused by a woman to speak about it because mm -hmm. the myth is, is that men are always supposed to be in control of sex and supposed to be in control of their bodies, and even though sexual abuse is not sex, it's still that they should have been, they should have taken care of themselves. And sometimes they think it's a favor. They don't even conceptualize it as something that is in fact abuse. Yeah. Now why do boys or men delay so long before they reveal their abuse? There's just a tremendous amount of shame that comes with being sexually abused for a man or a woman, but especially for men. In our culture, we learn that we're supposed to be in charge, we're supposed to be masculine and tough. And when you're sexually abused, you feel that shame of, I should have protected myself. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes men are unable to speak about it because they're afraid that they'll be judged. And sometimes they repress the memories. They're unable, they're, it's so terrible that it just goes out of their consciousness for sometimes decades. What impact does the abuse have on adult lives of survivors? Unfortunately, there's lifelong consequences that can occur, depression, suicidality, anxiety, troubles with relationships, sexuality confusion, sexual orientation confusion. There's a lot of complications. Now, if someone has been abused or is just looking on for more information about male abuse, where can they go to find this type of information? Definitely check out www.malesurvivor.org or oneandsix.org are two very good websites where there's plenty of information. There's resources here at the college and in this county. Many mental health centers provide help and support. All right. Well, Dr. Fragkin, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Thank you.